What's good, Commanders fans? So we got some more coaching movement here and some more coaching news. Uh, this is per Nikki Javala. She says that the Commanders have hired uh, Sharif. They're hiring Cowboys assistant defensive line coach, uh, assistant defensive line coach. Sharif Floyd is their assistant defensive line coach. Source confirmed. So this is another guy that was with Dan Quinn. Uh, last year, the last couple of years in Dallas, obviously, he was a highly, highly talented college football player and had a solid NFL career as well. It was, unfortunately, was cut short cut short uh, by a knee injury, and he actually ended up uh, suing Dr. James Andrew, a Andrews, um, f filing a $180 million medical malpractice lawsuit against Dr. James Andrews, but he played for the Vikings. Uh, first round pick went to Florida was a all American all and all it's just all everything basically at the defensive tackle spot. Somebody said a lot of a lot of scouts were like he you know was a, was worthy of a, being a top five pick. So uh, this is an SEC guy that can relate to the guys like Deron Payne, John Allen playing the SEC. Still a young guy, only what thirty three years old. Um, so still a young, innovative guy that can, is definitely can be relatable to players because we remember last uh, the last defensive line before Jeff Zagonia. That guy, I I'm blanking on his name, but his dad was a really good player, and he was uh, he was the defensive line coach. I'm gonna Google it real quick, but he was let go. You know, players just didn't like him at all, and um, I I, th I think that's not gonna be the case with this guy. Um, I know um, I know they you know Warren Sapp. I knew he wasn't gonna be the guy, but you know I know he would come during uh, training camp and stuff like that. And uh, they they did not. I think it was yeah, it was Sam Mills. Yeah, Sam Mills. So I know this. I know that. Um, I know that Sharif Floyd will not come in and be like Sam Mills at all. He's definitely gonna be a relatable guy for sure. But you look at his career, man. He had four and a half sacks one season. Uh, he led the Vikings in quarterback hurries per PFF with uh, uh, among the Vikings defensive tackles with twenty per pro, pro Football Focus. Despite playing just five hundred eighty-seven snaps, he had forty-two tackles and four and a half sacks and one pass deflection in one season as well. So, uh, like I said, this is a guy that can connect with players. And um, is working his way up the ranks. Hopefully, he can be a defensive line coach uh, with his next stop, his next journey after here. You just never know. So I, I think it's a solid hire. I mean, there's not much about him, honestly, you know, because he's just so young. So he hasn't done too much yet. Um, but there's just nothing but really optimism there. I mean, you look at Dallas' defense last year. They had a good season. They, they struggled to stop the run towards the end of the year. But for the most part, they were a good defense under Dan Quinn, you know, forcing turnovers and whatnot. So I think this is a solid hire. You know, you see what happens. Uh, he was the defensive line coach for only one year with Dallas in 2023. So he really is fresh uh, as far as being a, being a coach. He was the 23rd pick of the draft as well, six foot three, 311 pounds. So he probably could go out there and still play. It's unfortunate with the knee injury um, that definitely uh, ended his career. He was an All-American 2012, first team All-SEC in 2012 as well. 95 tackles in his career, nine and a half sacks, and one forced fumble in his NFL career. He is known for the interception that he caught on the sidelines. He just caught it. Um, apparently, he he uh, fainted in one game as well. I got to see, um, you know, when that happened. But apparently, he, uh, he fainted on the sidelines uh, during a Dallas game last year. Yeah, he, he fainted on September 17, 2023. He, he fainted, you know, but that's neither here nor there. But that's just some. That's just a write up on him. Like I said, there's not a lot of information, but just to be optimistic, and he's a guy that drink, that Dan Quinn trusts, and that he feels like you know he's worthy to bring over to Dallas. And Dallas did not block him coming over like they blocked Al Harris and Lunda Wells. But it seems like Dan Quinn really trusts uh, Sharif Floyd, a young, innovative guy, and in, uh, in uh, Sharif Floyd there. So let's see if he can get the best out of Deron Payne and John Allen. You know, because we need those guys to step up and go back to the form that they were the year before last year where they were having Pro Bowl season. We definitely need those guys back to their form for sure. Um, and then other news, they're going to be keeping Bobby Ingram as their wide receivers. Coach Jahan Dotson endorsed that with a tweet. He had a, a tweet uh, talking about that, uh, bringing back uh, Bobby Ingram. We don't know why Jahan Dotson reg regressed. Was it because of Sam Howell? Was it because of Eric Bieniemy? Was it a combination of those guys just not targeting uh, Jahan Dotson, not getting him involved? Jahan Dotson, he just couldn't connect with Eric Bieniemy. Was he playing too tight? Because of, you know, the player is not endorsing Eric Bieniemy. You know, was he just playing too tight? Was he not, you know, playing loose and playing like his normal self last year under Eric Bieniemy? Just not getting warmed up, not getting the targets, not getting the touches, you know. And uh, he did not improve under Eric Bieniemy last year. He regressed. So 
Um, you could look at Bobby Ingram as the wide receivers coach and be like, you know, all those question marks there, like what went wrong there? But Jahan Dawson put up the prayer hands. He tweeted the prayer hands on Twitter after the uh, tweet from Nikki Javala. So Savita Pritchard, uh, Bobby Ingram, and also uh, Ryan Kerrigan, they're the only holdovers, the only guys that are coming back. Uh, John Kime just tweeted out that most likely Jennifer King is not coming back. She was the running back coach last year. You know, I liked her, honestly, from just the outside looking in. B-Rock had a good season last year. Antonio Gibson just fumbled a little too much. I'm not going to blame her for that. You can see her on the sideline. Every time Gibson fumbled, she would talk to him. She would hit him with the pads and practice. You saw the pictures of that. So, you know, I thought she did a good good job for the most part from the outside looking in. So I think the staff is a solid staff. The only hire that I really, really don't like is OG Bobby Johnson. And that's really, really it. Um, the tight ends coach one is a little, I'm not going to say it's questionable, but, you know, there's some question marks about it. He was a wide receivers coach, and now he's going to be a tight ends coach. Uh, no problem with that, but I think it's a solid staff. Ken Norton as the linebackers coach, I think that's where he should be. So I think that's a good hire as well. So, um, But all right, you guys, you guys let me know what you guys think. Dan Quinn bringing some more Dallas guys. I will be making a video soon about uh, potential free agents from the Dallas Cowboys that may interest in Adam Peters and Dan Quinn. I know a lot of people just say, no, 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 we don't want any of those free agents. But you got to be realistic here and uh, understand that he may be bringing some of his guys Ron Rivera brought, brought over a bunch of commanders, which I was not happy about. And uh, also Airbnb brought over some of his guys when he brought over Marcus Kemp and Andrew Wiley. And uh, what's the other receiver's name? Um, what the What is that guy's name? Byron. Is it Byron Pringle? Was it him? Yeah, Byron Pringle. So there's going to be some guys that, uh, that Dan Quinn is definitely going to bring over from Dallas. So I do want to talk about that. Just make a brief video because free agency is kind of being overlooked, guys. You know, it's coming up pretty soon. But like I said, that's a solid staff. Some, some, some meh hirings and some really good hirings and kind of in the middle too but i do like that you know he's he's got he's pretty diverse with the picks that he's got it's not just a commanders or kind of like all the guys from dallas or a friend of a friend or somebody's son and stuff like that he's kind of been versatile with the guys that he's brought over for sure so i do like that a lot about this staff so all right you guys well you guys let me know what you guys think hell's commanders but a lot of it has been majority of guys that he knows but like i said it's been kind of diverse you know he's never worked with cliff kingsbury so that's that's a positive there. So, all right, guys, you guys let me know what you guys think. Health Commanders, peace.